Welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue working on our super low mile 2007 Honda Civic Si. Let's get started. So we need to take our deck lid off and strip it down so that we can paint the inside of it. We just had it on there to fit our quarter so the bodywork gnome could line up our quarter and we could get it in the right spot when we pulled it. So we're going to disconnect the latch. We had the cable and everything hooked up to it so that we could release it from inside the car. Since we had taken the lock out of the trunk, that was our only option to open it other than climbing through the back seat. And I'm too old for that. We'll pull our bolts out of our deck lid. And I rethought my decision. We're going to put a little towel underneath that corner so I don't have to replace the back window, even though I have an extra one. Pull the last bolt out of this side. We can hold this side, we don't need a towel. And our deck lid's off. Now we can pull our front bumper off. Pop the little push pins out so we can get the closeout panel off. Slide it out from underneath the back of the grill. And then slide it over the release handle. And we'll pull our screws out of it. Actually, the right screws, how you know no one's been here before. Just never seem to find their way back in there. They're Allen heads. But somehow I always seem to find the bolts in here with 10 millimeter heads. You have one screw in the back, on the driver's side. Somebody was laying on the floor. Now this guy's probably going to get in a customer's car and get it all dirty. And then not even bother to clean it. We need to take our front bumper off so that we can repair the holes from the zip ties on the other side. Little wiggle and pull, tear it out of its bracket. No need for side cutters on this side. We're gonna climb on our creeper and take a short nap. There's a couple push pins on the bottom. We need to pop out of here. I didn't feel like moving everything to put it up on the lift, so we're gonna work like liftless peasants on the floor in the dirt. Maybe just to prove that I'm not a princess and I can do things without a lid. Or maybe because the paint room floor is heated and it's nice and warm in there and the rest of the shop is a balmy 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And this princess doesn't like the cold. So all our clips are off. We'll just pull the bumper off from the clips underneath the headlight. And that side is really stuck in there. There's only four screws, and uh, this one had a couple zip ties instead of the one screw. And we'll pull our headlight out. It just kind of held in there with the bumper. It wasn't really doing much. And plug our sockets, which don't like to come apart because they're full of sand and cacti and rattlesnakes and all that other stuff you find in Texas. At least there's no salt in there and they're not corroded like they would be if they were from up here. Sand does not make these plugs easy to use. Enjoy my struggle. I left this video a little bit longer because it was gonna be pretty short. So you guys always complain you don't see me struggle enough. Well, there you go, I'm struggling. This one we got a few bolts to take out of. We get one bolt on the bottom of this bracket. Try not to drop it. We got rid of our excessively long extension. We get the bolt in the top, one in the side. And our light is still in there pretty secure. It's almost like there's another bolt holding it somewhere. No, not there. Getting warmer. There you go. Forgot about that one bolt hidden inside the radiator support. Look at that, now it comes out. Turns out you gotta take all the bolts out. I've never done this before. That was some other guy giving away a free Honda Civic that Took it out in the last video. 
Now we start our struggle with our plugs. One clip the harness that snaps into the bottom of the light. That seems like the easiest thing to do right now. I'm too lazy to walk back to the toolbox and get a screwdriver, so we'll just use the edge of the trim clip pliers to unsnap the plugs off of our bulbs here. You're supposed to press the back of the tab, but with all the sand in them, they don't come out. If you want a pair of those pliers, they're available in my Amazon store. We're also a very good hammer, and they're about to be used as a hammer if this plug doesn't come off. So while we were busy taking the front end of the car apart, the painting gnome was here and edged in our rear body panel here. So now we're gonna put it all back together. Well, he wasn't really here while we were working on the front end, but this is the land of make-believe, so we can pretend. So we put our little plugs in there. Now we can put our extensions on for our bumper reinforcement. We painted them, kinda didn't. We'll start all the bolts before we tighten them up. We'll go over the other side, do the same thing. Looks like the supervisor is patrolling to make sure I'm still working. Luckily she didn't catch me taking my little nap on the creeper up in the front. Otherwise she'd dock my pay for sure. Or at a minimum have to be bribed with treats to not report me. Little rust in those threads. That's our frame rail from Ohio. So we'll run it back and forth and clean up the threads a little bit. And a little tap on the extension is the equivalent of flicking the straps and saying that's not going anywhere. No torque specs required if you give it the little tap. Put our plugs on the inside. Supervisor's still making sure I'm working. Now we can put our bumper reinforcement up. There's a couple tabs that it hangs on. We'll set it on those tabs. And we don't have to get the supervisor to help us. Start our bolts. And we can't tighten the top one up because we need an extension. But we can't get the bottom ones in, so we'll start those. Head over the other side. And find out if I put this rail in the right spot. One bolt. There's two. There's a good chance I might have done it right. Everything lined up. Torque them down to manufacturer specs. Supervisor wanted to make sure I got a torque wrench. So now we got short extension. We can tighten up those two top bolts. Now we can start reassembling some of our deck lid. We'll throw the latch in here first. Stick the rod in there. Don't have to bend it. No promises. Now we can start our bolts. We didn't put the lock in yet. We're gonna do that after he paints it, so that rod's just gonna hang out in there for a while. We can snap our rubber baby buggy bumpers in. And turn it over. Nope, oh, wrong side. There's one. And there we go. Now we can put our adjustable rubber baby buggy bumpers in. Those bottom ones are a spacer for the bumper to the deck lid, and these are adjustable so that you can get the height right between the deck lid and the quarter panel. So we're gonna have to adjust those later. We'll put our little plugs in the drain holes. Kinda diverts the water so it doesn't just run straight out. 
and we can put our deck lid on. We already put our little towels and blankets over there. And if I can manage to bolt this in, we successfully made it through this without having to replace the back window. So far. We use our head. Prop this up a little bit. Hope I don't mess up my hair. And we're almost out of the woods. Double bolts on this side and our back window will be safe. These bolts are self-aligning, so we're just going to get them started and then run them in. We don't have to worry about lining anything up. Should be right where we left it, I hope. Tighten them up with our impact that identifies as a torque wrench. Make sure to put the impact down inside the deck lid, close the deck lid, and spend the next half hour looking for it. But before we close the deck lid, we'll put the cable back on so that we can at least open it when we finally remember an hour and a half later where we put it. Put the cable into the release and clip the cable into the bracket. Now we can start fishing our wiring harness through there. I can remember how this goes. It's starting to come back to me. I think it goes through here. It's going to now, but I do remember a struggle getting that harness out of there. So. And all the little clips seem to line up. So that's probably where it goes. Start clipping it into the deck lid. Plug in whatever is in there. Our latch has a couple plugs in it, but all the rest of this isn't gonna get plugged into anything. We don't have any lights or anything yet since we have to paint the outside. Snap our hinge cover in over our cable and wires. And we'll close our deck lid, check our gaps, and say goodbye to our impact. And now we're going to climb underneath the car, probably looking for our impact. But while we're down here, we're also going to cavity wax our frame rail because we do have welds on the inside that we're not able to get primer on. So we're going to coat them with wax. That way we don't have anything rusting out. There's a double panel in there. So we're going to go on the bottom and the top of the panel just to make sure we get everything. A little extra wax isn't going to hurt. So in a few years, we'll at least have one frame rail left of our Honda Civic. Now we can snap our sunroof drain outlet into the quarter panel so that it's not draining all of our water inside the trunk. Then we can snap in our vent. Snap in the vent on the other side. And then we can start pulling our doors apart. We'll start with the right rear door because, well, it's the easiest. 
the cap off behind our handle. There's one screw in there. It's also a little push pin. If you push the centers in, it disengages the clip. Then we can pop the window switches out. Just push on the back. Clips are pretty strong. One plug them. We'll need to switch again later to put the window down, so don't throw it too far. There's one screw behind that. Our door panel should pull off. We can disconnect our cables and our lock from the back of our handle. And before the cable came off, the entire handle assembly popped out of the door. So we're just going to finish popping that out of the door and leave it connected. We can just snap it in later. We have one cable off, we'll just put it back on. Then we can pull our water barrier down. Little plastic caps hold it up there. And the gooey fun stuff. Now we can unbolt our door lock actuator. Jeff Phillips screws. We need this out of the way so we can get to the bolt on the back of our outer door handle. We're probably going to put it back in just so that the painter can latch the door. And they can't quite get in there to get the actuator out so this one clip for the wiring harness, we're going to squeeze the tab in the back to pop it out of there so we don't break it off. And we managed to save it. Now we can pull our water barrier a little further down. We can reach in there. Push our actuator out, drop it down. And we can pull our screws out for our door handle. Fortunately, the camera battery didn't quite last long enough. So now our handle is loose. There's a couple metal brackets that hold it in on the back. So you take the screws out, slide the metal brackets out. And we can pull the handle out. Keep the rod connected because the little plastic clips like to break. So if I can avoid taking them off, I do. And we put the window down. So we can get our belt molding out of here just clips onto the pinch weld and there's two plastic clips on each end. I really don't care if this survives because we're getting new ones. These are all deteriorated and I was on the fence if I was going to replace them or not but when I found an entire set for the entire car for 40 bucks I, they're not even worth saving at that point. So we're just going to pry them up and if it breaks it breaks because they were junk anyway. We've been here before. And somebody had glued that on with Gorilla Glue, so somebody's had that off before. Now we're onto the front door. Pretty similar to the back door. One screw behind the handle and a little plastic clip. Of course, somebody's been in this front door, so we were missing our little plastic clip. Pop the little cap off that covers up the hole in the door for the mirror. Push our switches out of there.
Now we can start pulling all our screws out of the door. And just pull our door panel off. Make sure there's no screws on the bottom or the sides. We're good. I don't want to pull there. I'll break it. Grab the corner. Once you get one to go, the rest of them come with. Now we can disconnect the cables for our handle and lock, or maybe we'll take the entire handle out. We'll see. The car will decide. Looks like cables it is. The handle stayed with the door panel. I'm going to pop our little plastic caps off so we can get our water barrier down. Check and see where the supervisor is, see if we can get away without working. She's watching. So is Mr. Spotty and he's a little tattletale. Now we can see the bolts for the mirror. Unplug the harness. One clip it from the door. And bolt our mirror. I use the magnetic socket so that I don't have to worry about dropping all the nuts down in the door and having to go find them later. No search and rescue here. We'll hold on to the mirror just in case that one clip that holds it in place before the nuts are on isn't there. But it was. Feed the harness out. It wraps around the window channel. Stick our water barrier back up there so dust isn't getting stuck to it. Then we can pull the water barrier down in the back. Now we can see the bolts for our door handle. This one, they didn't put the actuator in the way. Pull our metal brackets out of here. The reinforcements for the handle. We're still gonna take our actuator out. That way we don't have to take that rod apart. We'll try and slide it out the outside of the door so we don't break the clip. Even if we do want to disconnect them, they're easier to disconnect outside the door. So we'll break them all loose. We'll just spin them out with a screwdriver. Even that stubby ratchet gives you more leverage than a screwdriver, so to avoid stripping them out and making my life miserable, we'll just break them loose. Unplug our actuator. One last screw in the front. Not like it's going to fall out. It's usually stuck to the door. And it was. Now that the actuator is disconnected, we have a little slack so we can move our rod around in there to get our handle apart. And hopefully out of the door. Well, that's after we go on an adventure here. We dropped a little metal bracket for the back of the door handle. And it went down into the bottom of the door. So we're going to see if we can find it. Now we can pull our door handle off. The gasket's kind of adhered to the door, so we'll just use our pick to break it loose. And we can pull 
it out of there. Now that we aren't trying to work inside the door, it's a lot easier to disconnect this little plastic clip from the rod. This rod does not want to come out with the handle, so it can stay in the door. It'll let us open the door from the outside. And put our window down. And now we can tear this bell molding off. Start in the middle, kind of twist them in towards the car and pull up. The clips in the front and the back have a tab that slides into a slot and another one that keeps it straight up and down. It's kind of a pain to get those in there. Even worse to get them out of there without breaking them. But for the price of new ones, these are disposable now. Not sure what's worse on this car. The rubber products or the paint. Neither one lasted in the sun. So that's about it for today. We still have to pull the doors apart on the other side, but if you see two Honda doors, you've seen them all. So once I get those apart, I'm gonna hand it off to the painting gnome and he's gonna paint our Honda Civic all up. Literally the entire car. So after he does all that, we'll throw it all back together, and get it out on the road. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then. I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show